Hey everyone, welcome to my first ever vlog. This is something I've been wanting to do for a little while now, I just haven't got around to it because I'm extremely busy. Basically, what these videos are gonna be is sort of impromptu and natural videos of who I am, and I like to do these just so that you guys get a better idea of who I am so that it's not just a uh, faceless person behind a camera just telling you how to do stuff. That said, I'll do these weekly and then maybe as time goes on, if they're successful or you guys really like them, I'll do them more frequently than that, maybe twice a week, three times a week. It really all depends. This first vlog, I'm going on vacation with my fiance tomorrow. So what do I do whenever I go on vacation? Or I know a lot of you guys call it holiday, or <laughs> I assume that's what that means, but here in the States, we call it vacation. So I'm going on vacation. How do I take care of all this stuff? Well, that's what I want to show you, and we'll start right here. So basically, I'm going to have to feed everything here, and this is one of my primary food sources. And what this is is my Doobie Roach cultures. So before I go on vacation, I want to get them in a clean enclosure and uh, just make sure that they're doing well. So I do this bi-weekly. I take them out of this container right here and put them into a new one that's totally clean and then I'll take out some for feeding and that you know that sort of thing but I'm gonna clean this out and we'll feed stuff so eventually I get everything from here transferred into here and I have their uh, this one hiding in here so now <laughs> there's officially None left in here. I got their water cubes and then the old food and I just dumped these out completely just to make it as clean as possible. And so now what I'm going to do is take all this outside and rinse it out with the hose. I'm not going to show you guys that because I don't feel like moving the camera out there, but <laughs> that's what I'm going to be doing. I'll be right back. So now I've got the container all clean. I'm going to add just a few more of these down in here. Now i got to put their water and food back in there. And these are just like caps that I reuse. You guys will, as, the more that this channel goes on and the more that you see me do stuff, I pretty much, I reuse like everything. I just, I like to do things that way, uh, obviously because it's cheaper for me and beneficial to the environment and that sort of thing. So. Basically, I got one here and I'm gonna put their food in here and I'll, I'll put a little bit more than I typically would put in here just since I won't be home to monitor how they're doing and I don't want my brother to have to do this if he doesn't need to. Then I get some of this nutritional yeast and I just top it off with a little bit of that and they also seem to really like that and then just get some of these gel cubes, which these are just miracle Grow water gel cubes. I don't know exactly what they're called, and I just mix in water with them. And the nice thing is you could mix in whatever you want with that, whether it be calcium solution, uh, spirulina, whatever. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to set these guys aside for now because I'm not ready to feed everything yet, but I just wanted this to be prepared for whenever the time comes. So put this aside. So now I'm going to change all the water in my aquariums and I'm going to go counterclockwise around the room. And I start out with my biggest fish tank, which is, you know, just tropical fish tank. And I got to do a little bit more maintenance in here than I typically would just because I'm starting to get algae on everything in my bristle nose plecos aren't doing their job right now so I gotta clean that up a little bit but typically I would do roughly a 40% water change on this once a week and then I also change out the filter floss and so I'll be doing that and then with the, but I'll do a little bit more today since I'm going on vacation I, I can't monitor this and do an additional water change during the week if I had to do so so I'll do about a 50 to 60 percent water change and the same goes for my other ones although the goldfish tank I'll probably do around the 80 percent water change I always do a lot more on that simply because you know they're goldfish what do you expect and then the betas tank I'll do about a 20 percent it doesn't really need that much since the fish aren't that big and they're not really creating that much waste so what I do is I got this clamp here and I'm just gonna clamp this side of the hose 
down into here. I do that just so that the hose doesn't go anywhere whenever I'm going around. And then I take this end of the hose, <laughs> take it outside, and then get the siphon going. Now it's starting to drain and I got this little scrubber here and I'm just going to go through and scrub everything and I'm also going to remove all of the decorations except for these two pieces of driftwood. So I'm going to take all those out so I can wash them and I'll actually do that first. So now I got all of the decorations removed. I'm just gonna come in here and scrub off the glass first. Now I'm pretty much done scrubbing at this point and I'm just gonna come in here with the hose and hold it a little bit above the sand and just suck up as much debris as I possibly can. It's not necessary for me to do a use the gravel back right now because I did that not too long ago so I just want to get all of the loose debris that's sitting on top of the sand and I'm actually going to shut off this filter now so now I got it drained enough I think I think that's a good amount and what I'm going to do is move on to the next aquarium and we'll just go around. I like to drain them all and then fill them up. So we'll do that and then we'll come back to this one later. Now moving on to my betas tank and this thing, oh, I'll pick a little bit of that out. So I'll just drain this a little bit and I use a different hose simply because I hardly you know, have to drain anything by comparison. Now we're gonna do the goldfish tank. I'm actually gonna shut off the filter on this before I even get started. I drain this a lot more than my other ones simply because of just, just the way that the tank is set up. So I got the hose ready, I'll be right back. So that's all good. And now I'm just gonna let it drain out and I'm probably gonna drain it down to like here. I always do a lot on the goldfish tank just to keep it as clean as possible and they really don't care. They like the water change. Every time I do it, you know, they look at them. They don't even care right now. Not that they probably don't know what's actually going on, but you guys know how I feel about my goldfish. Alright, that seems to be a good level. Take this out. So now we're back to this one and what I'm going to do is go upstairs and clean off all of these plants and I'll be coming up and down the stairs several times with buckets of water to fill this up. The way that my house is set up I don't have the luxury of using say like a stationary tub or something to put water into here that's at the proper temperature so in order to get the proper temperature I had to go upstairs to my bathtub which is one, two, three, actually four flights of stairs up and keep coming down with five gallon buckets of water to fill this up. So it's a little bit of workout for me. I don't really care though because I actually don't have time to work out for the day since I'm preparing for vacation. So that will be my workout for the day and uh, I'll fill it up first with water then we'll put the plants in. And so I got a bucket down here. You can't see it right now. Um, and I have another bucket upstairs filling right now. So what I did is I just put my dechlorination drops into this since it's straight tap water. And then I just come up in here and dump it on and All right, so now I am totally out of breath, but that's all right. No time to stop now. So wipe off some of this water. I'll do a more thorough clean here later on. And now I gotta come down here and pull my filter out. So now I got my filter taken out here, which is a API XPL. Definitely gets the job done. And I just gotta take the top off here, set off to the side and this top of this. 
and that. And I gotta change out this filter floss up in here. And I do this twice a week, actually, just to make sure that there's not any excess crap in there, no pun intended. And I'll actually do this again before I leave, either tomorrow morning or sometime tonight, just because after I get this back in place, it's gonna suck up a ton of debris. So rather than that, just sitting all week in my filter here, I might as well change this stuff out again, just to ensure that I have this as clean as possible during the week. I got it. I got my filter plugged in and we're a bit, little bit cleaner here. Whenever I do a water change like this where I didn't do the gravel vac prior, now I only do that about once a month since because it pretty much doesn't get down in sand like it does with gravel. But I'm gonna put in some of these water clarifying drops just to help bind up all that dirt, get it sucked up in that filter. So if you watch, it's gonna just in a second here really start to clump together. Yep, like right in here. I'm gonna go take all this upstairs and wash it off. I'm not really gonna show you that. All I do is just run under some water and scrub it off. Then I'll be back to put these back in the tank. In the meantime, I'll let you wash that. And the beauty of recording videos. I just, you know, put all this stuff back in here, set all kinds of different stuff. And of course, I, I don't know if my camera died or it's been acting kind of weird lately. I think it's about time that I got myself a new camera. So basically you missed out on all of what I just did. Long story short, it's set up and ready to go. In a few hours, it will be pretty much crystal clear. It just has to set a little bit, let that filter run. And I'm just gonna wipe off all the water here and get it looking good. Naturally, I got water all over the floor, so I gotta clean it up here. So now we're on over here at the Beto's tank, and obviously I already drained it. I showed you guys that earlier, and I got a bucket up here full of dechlorinated water once more. There you go, just drain it on out. Wait, what is going on here? Uh, I was wondering what the heck was going on with this leaf here. There's a nerite snail on it. He's weighing it down. Now I'm gonna come up in here and change the filter floss. And I don't change it as frequently in here simply because there's not as much waste being created. So take this thing out. Floss it. And as you saw, I use a different kind of floss in here just because if I use that, um, that stuff called polyfill in here it would be going all throughout the aquarium so I got a nice clean one in there and this is a aqua clear 100 now we can fill up the goldfish tank and what I do with this one is I just fill it up with the hose straight from outside now of course I can't do this in the winter because it's <laughs> you know, the hoses are free frozen and it's uh, ice cold out there but right now it's warm enough that the temperature outside is more or less the same as their tank right now i'm gonna run outside turn this on run back inside and then i'm gonna put in my dechlorination drops so now we got the water coming in and it's not really moving the sand around the temperature is good put in my drops. Now I got this filled up a lot and I gotta run out there and by the time I get it shut off we'll be like there. Take this out of here now. Take that out. Now I'm gonna pull this filter out of here, which this is an API XPS, and do the same thing like I did with the 
other aquarium. Overall, I like these API canister filters. They're pretty easy to maintain. I wouldn't say that they're probably the best ones out there, obviously, but if you're working on a budget and you're looking for decent canister filters, they're not a bad way to go. Now we're over here at MJ's tank and I gotta hurry up and get him while he's sitting up there. But basically I take him out of here and put him in a bucket down here just so that he's not stressed out when I'm cleaning out his tank. So, And that's how you do it. You just gotta grab him real quick so that he doesn't get stressed out because he is a little bit of a nut bag, kind of like the silver dollars, but uh, see he's kind of chilled out. And this is his bucket, this is the only thing I use it for. I put him down in here, and I clip the lid on halfway. This is open so he can get some air. I'm gonna get this out of the way so that we don't disturb him at all. Get this down in here, like so. Clamp it on, just like the other ones. So now I got this tank back in here. Then I gotta do the buckets for the last time. Thankfully, I only gotta do it about two times, two and a half times for this setup because it's a lot smaller. So I'm gonna go fill these buckets up. I'll be right back. Now I'm just gonna put in some Reptile Safe drops. I don't really measure them out. Never, never have to be honest. So got those in there. So, yep, temperature's good. I'm gonna let it sit just for a little bit before putting him in there. So now it's been sitting for a good 10 minutes or so, and I gotta sneak in here and get MJ. So what I do is I sneak him in there. Oh, got splashed on the wall, but then I just put this towel over top of here for, I don't know, maybe like 15 minutes, just to calm him down a little bit and keep keep his stress level at a minimum. I just got done eating dinner a little while ago and I took a, about an hour, hour and a half break from all of this. So I'm feeling pretty good, re-energized to finish this all off. So I'm gonna take this off of here. He is all calmed down now and we'll start feeding everything. And so I just went out to another reptile show the other week and naturally I picked something up. I got this because it was a good price and I've been thinking about it a lot, a lot lately that I definitely needed to get another African bullfrog. The one I used to have, Gunther, he lived for about 14 years, maybe a little bit longer. And the thing is he was a pixie frog version so he was the dwarf. Whereas this is the giant African bullfrog, this one's going to get huge. And I chose one that looked like a male. It's hard to tell when they're this young, but based on the structure of the body and the coloring and that sort of thing, I am hoping that it's a male, obviously because I want it to get bigger, but we're gonna feed him a couple of dubio roaches, clean out his water bowl, and get him ready for vacation. Oh, and he, he just got it. Of course I missed it, because he was all this shot, but. Go. Slammed on it. I love these frogs. They're great eaters, really easy to take care of, um, not really demanding in any aspect of taking care of them, really. You just gotta feed them all. sure he's just about done swallowing that roach so let me get him out of here real quick and I'm gonna go clean this out real quick so now I got his water bowl all cleaned out 
and at this point we'll just assume that it's a male whether it is or not we'll find out in time I'm just gonna come in here and you can see that's where his hole was just kind of clean this up a little bit that's enough for that guy I don't want to keep stressing him out because clearly he is we'll just come back in here in a little bit and feed him a mouse I had said we got to feed um, Dean, and we also got to feed that African bullfrog a mouse, so we got a large, which this is actually a rat, for Dane. Oh, wait, no, this is a, a fuzzies. Okay, I'll feed him one of these. So while that rat is thawing out, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna get Dean out of here, we'll clean out his setup, and then by the time I'm done with all of that, uh, I should be ready to feed him that rat. If not, then maybe I'll just hang out with him for a little bit. As I've said a number of times, we're gonna be getting Dean out of here very soon, and that's officially gonna start happening once I get back from vacation. I wanted to start a lot sooner than that, but the way that I am with my projects, I didn't want to get started on it and then not be able to finish it while I was on vacation. So what I do here is I have a bag and I actually gotta go get a rubber band real quick. And I got a rubber band here. So let me come in here and pull out some of this stuff. Once I get him out of here, I'm gonna put him in this bag. And this is not a actual snake bag, but it works pretty well. I got a pair of Converse in here some, some time ago. So, just a rubber band on the top so that he can't get out. Get these wood chips off of here. And then I just set him aside for later. Dean just shed, so I gotta come in here and find all his pieces of skin. Take everything out. And he's about due for some new mulch here. The only reason I haven't got more of it yet is simply because I know I'm putting him in his new enclosure soon. So I didn't want to waste the, the money on it whenever we're just gonna get him that pretty soon. And so this setup is not supposed to look nice at all. I don't really, obviously I don't think it looks nice. Just put it in there and he likes it. So I'm gonna go wash this out. So now that I got his water bowl all cleaned out, I can put it into position. And chances are I'm gonna have to clean it out again before I leave. The reason why I'll have to do that is generally after he eats, he comes in his water bowl drink some of it and then defecates in it so uh we'll see what happens if he does it while i'm gone then my brother's gonna have to take care of it so we'll see what happens so now we're gonna take care of my crested geckos i'm gonna take her off of here and bring her on over to the table so i have eight gallons of water on tap that my brother can just pour into these sprayers if he needs it or use the handheld sprayers but obviously it's important that we always have clean water for these guys so they need misted upwards of two to three times a day. And unfortunately, I still have not decided on a name. A lot of you guys gave me good suggestions. There's ones that it seems like collectively you guys like, but I'm still just, <laughs> I'm, I still, I'm not in love with anything, guys. Not, not like I love her at least, but it's just, it's always tough for me to come up with names because I obviously want them to reflect the animal. But to be honest, I like to go for like, human names as weird as that sounds so like henry obviously that's typically a person's name whereas a lot of you guys have given me suggestions in the realm of months 
So like, you know, I think somebody said October, some people said autumn, different things like that, which I'm not really keen on. I obviously I appreciate the su suggestions and I see the, um, the thought behind them. But for me, I, for whatever reason, I kind of like people names for these guys. So she's hiding up in her leaves, of course, and that's typically what she does. Got, give her just a little bit more water. So in terms of feeding, I'm gonna throw some crickets in here right now, which she can eat over time as she sees them. And then of course we have our crested gecko diet here, which what this is, is just a mixture of Pangea, I don't remember exactly which one it is, and some Rapashi. And I think she's actually scoping out a cricket right now. Yeah, you can tell. By the way, she's moving, she's on the hunt. But anyways, I'm gonna put one of these in here right now, and then I'll have two on deck. So she'll eat today, which is Sunday, and I'm sure that, you know, there's those crickets in there as well, so she'll eat throughout the week on those as well, because guaranteed she's not gonna eat them all today. And so she'll have this for two days, then another one of these will be put in on, what day? Tuesday, then the next one will be put in on Thursday, and I'll be back Sunday, so there will be a two day break where she probably won't be eating anything. And, you know, that's fine. I, I think what people tend to think with the reptiles and stuff is that you got to feed them every single day and this sort of thing. I have always only fed my reptiles every other day, just so, well, except for the snakes, but every other day, just so that they don't get obese or anything like that but if you if you do a break here or there it's not you know it's not the end of the world and so after I have this all mixed up I just set it on top of this stick right there and I don't have the hanging apparatus but she's all up in here anyway so comes up here and eats and does that sort of thing so then as I said before at two points within the week my brother's gonna have to put these in here and that's pretty much it for her Put her back down here. And so now we can come in here and we'll do the same thing for Henry. Although, the only thing I gotta do differently is I gotta trim out his Calathea here. A bit of a growth spur right now. Where's that? Yep, there he is, just hanging out. That's one of his prime spots. Henry's a little strange. I have tried several times to put his food up high here and, you know, similar to the other gecko, and he, he will not eat it if it's elevated. He likes to come down to the ground and eat it. So, I mean, that's where I put it. I put it like right in here, as you saw earlier. But before we do that, I'm gonna do a little spray down in here. And so generally what he'll do is, if you saw a little bit ago, he adjusted himself whenever I started spraying. He'll kind of get himself under a leaf like this and drink the water as it beads off of it. See how he's doing? Okay, so get a good spray down there and then we'll mix up his food. So there he is, he came down. Whether or not he actually eats right now or not is irrelevant. Because he will at some point or another. So we'll close this up and leave Henry go. So now we're gonna come over here and take care of my vivariums, or the two that I have right now. That other one doesn't need anything done with it. I'm just gonna clean off the glass, or well actually this is polycarbonate. I'm gonna clean these off real quick. And really all that needs done with these is they just need misted once a day. So my brother's already gonna be going around misting everything. So come in here, give him a nice thorough misting. So we got these nice and watered. And what I'm gonna do now is 
close them up. My brother is obviously going to have to water these, but what he's not going to do is what I'm going to do next. Uh, the last thing that I got to do with these is I'm going to drain the false bottoms out. And I don't want my brother to have to do that, but generally I do it about once a week. So I just open up the valve. I forget the airline to put on there and there it goes. And those mice are finally ready to go. So we will feed Dean here and then we will feed uh, that frog. I gotta be careful when I'm doing this not to disturb his stomach because I don't want him to throw up. So if I just send him right in there, and chances are he's probably pretty thirsty, so put him near the water pool. So last but not least, I'm going to come over here and take care of the 125 gallon. And just like the other variums, they really do not take very much maintenance at all. Basically just spray them down and then every once in a while I'll put some food in there. Now I'm going to put a little bit extra in there today simply because I'm going to be gone for a few days. but. All that needs to happen is just throw some crickets in here. As you can probably tell, the fire belly toads, they came out. They know what's going on. I just sprayed them. They are ready to eat because that's usually, they go hand in hand. I'll feed, or I'll water them and then feed them right after. Okay, so now I got the crickets all dusted and I'm just gonna uncrawl out. So that's about it for this setup. As I had alluded to earlier, it really does not take very much maintenance at all. Just a little mist thing and then feeding the animals. And for wondering why I don't have any sort of automatic misting or anything like that. And Something I'll get around to doing in the future, I just haven't got around to it just yet. Now you're probably wondering about my fish, and this is really the last thing I have to cover, and at this point I'm just, oh man, I'm just tired and out of it, so stick with me here. So, what we got? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, six, okay, so he's got to feed them for six days, because I'm coming back a week from today, so set up one of these for each of them. The only one that is different is the goldfish since they eat two to three times a day. So I'll do all my other fish first. So this is for my main fish tank. They get flakes every day. And naturally my camera died again. I'm <laughs> Normally I'm looking at the camera a lot and click and stop. Oh, excuse me whenever I do my normal recording but uh, what I was saying whenever the camera died or I, I, I don't actually know when it died so you might have missed a lot of this but basically I said about the algae wafers and how the silver dollars tend to play frisbee with them for a little while until the plecos can get them but I just got this the other day and there's different things in it granules crisps and baby shrimp and I gotta be careful with the shrimp because I'm allergic to them and I'm also allergic to bloodworms which I'll be feeding here shortly. And then, so these portions are all divided up real nice and all that my brother's got to do is just dump them in 
and be done with it. And I'm obviously going to reuse these containers. They're the same kind that I use for the uh, Crested Gecko diet. But I'm going to write on them so he knows which day to do them. What I'm going to do for the goldfish tank is I'll do, do one, two, five, six. I'm just going to put the portion that they would get for the entire day in these. And then I'll just say, you know, feed half of it in the morning, half at night. Okay, so that's good. Got all our food taken care of. And so as I said a little bit ago, I'm allergic to blood worms and normally I wear gloves when I do this, but I ran out of them. So I just got these bags and what I'm going to do is just fill this up with some dechlorinated water, put in the blood worms and then feed them some, feed them some blood worms. And so I'm going to just use this main block for this tank, which this is a ton of blood worms, but these guys love it. These guys definitely like themselves some blood worms and they get the rest of what's in here. And so now we're gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna actually pack my stuff. I've been putting it off for a while just because I've, you know, I've had a lot of stuff going on down here. So let's go on upstairs and pack my stuff. This is it guys, the morning that I'm leaving. I know I look kinda, <laughs> kinda rough. This is what I look like in the morning on most times. I got the, my hair is all messed up and whatever else, but uh, that's basically what I gotta do whenever I am getting ready to go on vacation. Of course, I omitted some things and um, some things got lost during recording and you know, I think it's just the nature of this at first since I never really had vlogged before. Obviously I've done a lot of other videos but uh, something like this is a lot different of a format of say like the DIY type of videos and instructional videos and that sort of thing but as you can see it's a lot of work to keep all these animals. I enjoy it and keep in mind as well that normally I'm not putting this much like I'm not, I don't have to do this much stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. This was more or less like a week's worth of taking care of my animals in one day, simply because I try to get as, you know, as much of it taken care of in one day as possible. Like normally I won't do all of the water changes on one day. I'll do like MJ and the beta on one day and then the main tank and the goldfish on one day. So uh, I also don't, I feed my reptiles every other day, but it's usually not on the same day. So I'll feed my crested geckos one day and then maybe I'll feed everything else another day. It just helps on a day to day to kind of s spread it out. So I'm not having to do it all in one day, but I did it all yesterday so that I could uh, get it taken care of before I went and some coffee. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, I appreciate you guys sticking through it because I feel like it, it was probably long. I don't, we'll see. Maybe I'll be able to edit it to be pretty short, but 
this will probably be on the longer side of a vlog they're not really gonna have any set length they, you know they could be upwards of a half hour long they might be as short as five minutes probably wouldn't be any shorter than that simply because I don't you know what's the point it then you don't really need a video to be any shorter than that so hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you think of uh, me doing vlogs if you guys think it's a good idea if you if you hate the idea I don't know they're, obviously they're not gonna be like me doing random things it will still be relatable to everything else that goes on this channel and of course the type of content that's going to be on the channel is going to continue to diversify as time goes on so i got i still gotta get a shower here and finish packing up it's probably my fiance text me right now to see if i'm up okay let's see if yep <laughs> so of course i'm taking all the gear down there do a little vlog as i'm down there as well and i'll see you guys uh i'll see you guys next week